As Chief Innovation Officer at Fogarty, Mike loves to visit each entrepreneur daily to see what he can do to help. He epitomizes a full contact mentoring approach, winning our innovators appreciation. He is one of the founders of Diversity by Doing um, and a frequent speaker and panelist in different industry forums. Mike has a storied career in multiple industries. industries. However, prior to joining Fogarty Innovation, he served as Chief Operating Officer at Minerva Surgical, a medical technology company focused on women's health care, as well as three additional med tech companies. He holds a BS in Industrial Engineering from Cal Poly San Luis Osi oh, <laughs> I always mess up the name of this, my bad. Um, and an MBA from Santa Clara University. When not working, Mike likes to keep moving, hitting the ski slopes, open water swimming in San Francisco Bay, hiking, playing tennis, and spending time with his family. Thank you, Mike. So thank you so much for the opportunity to, to present today. And uh, I'm going to go a little bit of a different direction. I hope it works. Otherwise, it might be a complete failure. But that's been the you know, kind of career advice that I've taken for myself my whole way through. So today, I'm going to talk a little bit about bungee jumping as a guide to career decisions. So I always like to start with the big picture. So I like to say life happens. We have to embrace it, draw from it, mold it as best we can, and then thrive. So that's the big picture. And then within that, a career is part of that. And let's not confuse the two. The career is a subset of life, not the other way around. And so we always have to look at it in that context. And, and so today, I'm going to talk about that subset, which is the career. But please always frame it in the focus of, of a life. I've had a wonderful uh, career, but more importantly, I've had a wonderful life. So that's the piece that I want to make sure that is everybody navigates their, their pathway you always have the North Star of, of why you're trying to do the things you're trying to do. So if, if, I, if I just talk about career to begin with, one of the things I hope to give to you is don't be afraid. So along my career, I've been a paper boy, a burger flipper, a gas station attendant, a furniture mover, a trail builder for the state, I've worked construction, been a machinist helper, an electrical mechanic, a teacher's assistant, I've shoveled stalls uh, on, a, on a ranch. I've been a house painter. I've been an Imagineer for Disney. I've been a production supervisor, an engineer, a ski bum, a bartender, a management consultant, a sales analyst, plant manager, business unit director, director of international sales, a division GM, a soccer coach, a substitute teacher, a COO, and, and now my favorite job is being a mentor. So if you can take anything away from that, and I think Garrett will say the takeaway is, yeah, I'm old, but the real message is nothing is final. And wherever you're at today doesn't necessarily mean that's where you have to be. If you want to be somewhere else, do it. Try things out, and those things will actually lead to being able to uh, have a really fun life. But again, those are just titles, and those are parts along the way. But the thing I'm most proud about is being a husband, a dad, a son, a brother, a friend, uh, and you know, a, a human being and a, a major league goofball. So I think that's the piece that I wanna really encourage everybody to, to focus on is, you know, take life on, enjoy it, make it work for you and be able to, you know, not be afraid of it. So what I'm gonna to try to do today is take a small snapshot in, you know, trying to make a, a bridge between an experience and in kind of a career decision. So uh, one of the things I did was 12 years into my career, I was a director of international sales. So first off, people should be thinking, how the hell did you do that? Because you know, my MO, I was a very, very painfully shy uh, kid and, and young adult. Uh, I was an engineer, I was an introvert, you know, all the things that you don't think of as being a top you know, opportunity or prospect for somebody to be in sales. You know, to me, selling was like, oh my God, this is gonna be terrifying, but I did it. Um, and so this, this thing here that we're talking about today was a large distributor meeting that uh, I was pulling together. So I was in charge of Canada, Latin America, and Asia for a large multinational company. And we had a, a meeting where we're bringing all our distributors into New Zealand. And so uh, the thought was, okay, this has got to be a fun experience and team building. What are some things that uh, people would want to do to really make this a, a really fun uh, outing? 
And so reached out to ask people what they wanted to do. And at that time, New Zealand was really well known for bungee jumping. And so people said, hey, let's do a bungee jumping exercise. I'm thinking, well, uh, not something I was going to be participating in, but if that's what you want to do, then um, let's go ahead and do that. So basically what I did is I, I went out and I researched a bunch of outfits and this is uh, before the internet. And as you can tell by this video, uh, this is long before the internet and long before, you know, real cinematography. Um, and so somehow I was able to find, you know, the group that had the highest safety rating and the best uh, customer satisfaction. Um, so I then, you know, reached out to the owner and said, hey, I've got this group of people coming in from all around the world, like to set this experience up. You know, what do you think? And he says, we can do this. This is going to be not a problem. So it was uh, uh, an outfit and it was at what was called the Pipeline Bungee Bridge. At the time, it was the highest bungee jump platform in the world. So first thing is probably we should have started a little bit differently than that. But, you know, you live and you learn. Um, so, you know, at the, the time I said, well, I'm sure as hell I'm not going to do this, but the distributors were just, they're raring to go. They thought this is going to be the, the best experience ever. Well, we were wrong on both counts. So the night before everybody was at this welcoming dinner and they're just, you know, extremely fired up and excited and just talking about how they're going to do a double backflip and a one and a half gainer once they get up there and, and, and be able to, you know, land and stick the landing. And I'm going, you guys are nuts. There's no way that I would even try something like that. That's just just crazy. So next morning we get up, the, uh, the uh, 25 uh, distributors come up and we're gonna go up and, and do the bungee jump. So we, we get up on this bridge and this platform and nobody wanted to go. And I said, oh, this is just wonderful. So, you know, in life we all have options. So here's some options that, that I faced at that time. We can all stand and look at each other until somebody decides to go. Uh, we can wave the event off and say, hey, nobody's going to talk about this and we'll just move on and, and pretend it didn't happen. We can draw straws and maybe throw somebody off, you know, type of thing to, to start it off. Or I could be the, the host and, and go ahead and lead us off. So I guess the lesson learned there is sometimes options really aren't options as, as you think. Okay, so Annette, would you mind going and start it back? And so now we'll do like they do on uh, NFL Sunday. We'll go, you know, play by play and see what the lessons learned here and, you know, how we, uh, we actually go about, uh, you know, trying to make this uh, a lessons learned. Um, so we never need to go through things alone. Obviously, I'd never a bungee jump before, and that probably wouldn't be a good thing to try on your own the first time out. So, you know, mentors and friends and colleagues and interested people, anybody that you can find that you can help and that can help you is going to be just so vital in any career decisions that you make. And I think, you know, both Troy and Kavita, you know, did a very nice job of saying, Here's how you, you know, work with you know, people that can help you and in, in the importance of having them. Okay, so perfect there. So there's, there's a couple of lessons to be learned here. One is, you know, you need to prepare. And so what this guy is doing is he's telling me, here are the things you need to know. He's not making it really in depth in terms of what the, the principles and the scientific you know, methods are behind this. He's saying, okay, here's what you need to know to make this happen. So in life, you need to prepare, but you can't be paralyzed by preparation. It's that fine balance of how much do you need to know to make a decision versus how much do you just have to go and, and, and do it. So preparation is critical, but don't let it paralyze you. The next thing is, you know, once you decide, you need to get your mind right. So in life, we have multiple decisions. I think everybody I've talked to so far on 
this mentoring session has immense talent, has immense capabilities, are just, you know, full of opportunities. And the biggest, you know, difficulty for them is I've got so many opportunities and I've got so many things I'm interested in that I'm not sure where to start. And so you really have to kind of lock in on what it is and, and the, the who, what, when, where, why, and how of where you're gonna go with your decision. And then one of the other things this, this guy was telling me is we're looking out just before I jump, is he says, keep your eye on the horizon. You see, and he's pointing out into the distance there. And that was probably the best advice I had because if you would look down, I think my knees would have buckled and I probably would have just panicked and said, that's, that's it. It's the same thing in life. There's gotta be some things that are your horizon that keep you grounded those principles, those beliefs, those things that are near and dear to you that form who you are. You always have to keep those in focus. And even when you're doing things that are a stretch for you or are extending your capabilities or are uncomfortable, you always have to have that horizon as something that you're watching. Okay. Okay, and stop it there, please. So that was the countdown. And that was probably the most terrifying part of the whole thing. Because at that point in time, you know you're committed, but you haven't committed yet. So just like in life, the hardest part of any of the decisions that we make are the lead up to the decision. Once you make the decision, that's usually you know, very liberating. You know, the, the consequences of the decision are, are a next order you know, to be dealt with, but really the part that paralyzes most of us is that work up to making the decision and the fretting that goes on and the hand wringing that goes on. And so a big part of what we need to understand is, yeah, it's scary you know, before you go do it, but just like this bungee jumping, once you actually do it, it wasn't that scary at all. But that lead up to that point was just terrifying. So again, you know, make sure that you just realize, hey, it's gonna be uncomfortable, it's gonna be sticky, it's gonna be scary, but I'm going to get through it and I'm going to grow as a result of whatever I'm doing here. Um, okay, so you see I'm going up and down on this thing. It's basically like a yo-yo. And I don't know if whoever's bungee jumped before, but the part that was surprising to me is I thought it was going to whip me back up, you know, and I was, you know, worried about a kind of a whiplash. Well, in fact, I didn't even know I was going back up until visually I saw the ground going the other way from me, you know, from a feeling standpoint, I thought I was still going down. And I think the same thing is in life. We all have ups and downs, and sometimes we don't know if we're up or down. And so it's just a matter of trying to ride through that and trying to figure out where are we and understand who we are and how we basically, you know, are able to, to work through those issues. And then if you kind of look at this, you know, picture here, you know, I, I'm going to yo-yo back and forth for, you know, a minute or two. But the part that all of a sudden when all this is done, I realize, okay, well, I'm hanging still about, you know, 120 feet in the air. Um, what does that mean? How the hell am I going to get down? So one of the other parts that we have to understand is that the little things are what makes the big things possible. So we all always think about the grand goal, the big event, the capstone, the culmination of whatever we're trying to get to. But in fact, in actuality, it's all these little things that build and all these things that end up being a crescendo and that we have to enjoy those along the way. So the fact that they figured a way to lower me down from where I was at, you know, to a boat, which was in the river down below, was pretty important thing to, to have in place. I would have never have thought about that. But again, little things are what make the big things possible. So again, I, I said that the most terrifying moment was the countdown. That really wasn't. I was actually pretty surprised at, you know, how calm I was. You know, I think it was one of those ones I'm going, this is crazy, but, you know, it wasn't afraid. It wasn't until I actually got down on the ground and thought about what I did that all of a sudden it hit me. I'm going, oh my God, I got a wife and two kids. You know, I am not a, you know, a stunt man. I am not a, a super athlete. And what the hell was I thinking? But, you know, it was a reflection. And so it was putting this experience in context to say, what did I learn? What did I enjoy? What are things that I you know, pull away from this? And so I think reflection for each of us is so important as we navigate our careers and we navigate our lives. 
think about what we experience and what we can draw from that and then how we can extend that to the next thing that we do. And I think the, the, the final thing that I would uh, like to end this with is let's not take ourselves so seriously. Everybody, uh, including myself, has a tendency to think everything that we do is life and death. Everything that we do is going to be seen by somebody else. We're going to be measured. We're going to be, you know, uh, assessed. We're going to have some, you know, thing that is is going to take away from us if we don't do it right. I think a big part of, you know, working through a career and working through life is not taking ourselves so seriously. So, uh, Annette, if you could just put the last slide up there, please. Just a summary of kind of what I said. Uh, really, I, I encourage just keep the big picture in place, which is life happens, embrace it, draw from it, mold it, and then thrive. And then everything else kind of you know, will work itself out. So thank you so much for the opportunity to speak to you today.